in this bit of English literature help, I will be discussing theory number four as part of my course by Abraham Maslow entitled The Hierarchy of Needs. I will give you uh, just a brief introduction and then play a short audio clip from NPR um, and then connect this theory to Lord of the Flies and ourselves as well. So uh, this theory was fully developed in 1954 in Maslow's book called Motivation and Personality. Um, and what this theory posits is that every human on the planet has a survive and thrive mentality. We all have the urge to survive by instinct, but a determination to achieve uh, something greater in ourselves. So take a look at this photo, which shows the different stages of our human development. At the very bottom is our basic needs as a human. This includes water, food, air, etc. And from this, Maslow states that we cannot fully function as a human being when these needs are not being met. Just think of yourselves in class right before lunch. Your concentration suffers, you become more agitated, etc. There is some validity here. At stage two, as we move up the pyramid, we get into safety needs and requirements. And this includes uh, financial uh, needs, um, our health, our personal security. And here Maslow states that if these safety needs are not being met, it will start to dictate our behavior much like in our first stage. So these needs not being met can lead uh, to stress and anxiety or other mental illnesses. At stage three is when we transition from survive to thrive. So stage three is about um, connection, love, and belonging. And we can only truly get to this stage once stages one and two have been satisfied. In this stage, uh, friendship, uh, family, and intimacy, they become incredibly important. Human beings, um, we require connection and belonging. Um, and this is why children with abusive parents or a child being bullied at school can struggle with this stage because the two places in the world where a child should have comfort is at home and at school. So when one or both of these places are taken away from the child, uh, it can have serious effects. So this stage not being met can again lead to stress, anxiety, and mental illness, loneliness, etc. In the fourth, in the fourth um, of five stages, Maslow looks at self-esteem. That is to say how we respect ourselves and how we feel we are valued by others. A higher self-esteem and confidence is good and lower self-esteem can obviously, obviously lead to feelings of helplessness or feeling weak and insignificant. In the final stage is what Maslow refers to as self-actualization. Think of this quote. What you think you can be, you must be. In other words, the best person that you think that you can be is what you should become. Another good quote is the following. Hell is not a physical place. It is your current self meeting the person that you could have become. And these quotes form the basis of this stage. This final stage is when the person realizes their fullest potential and is expressing that positivity to the world. This can mean being the best that you can possibly be at your job or doing the best that you can be as a parent or the best that you can be as a team player on a sports team, etc. So what I'll do is um, I'll play the audio clip for you from NPR um, and then make a connection to uh, Lord of the Flies and ourselves afterwards. And Guy Raz, you'd never know it from just walking around. But in a simple mid-century building on the campus of Brandeis University near Boston, there's an office where some of the most revolutionary ideas in psychology were first developed. An office. It's just a room. Yep. No plaque outside. Yeah, we really should have a plaque outside yeah. that office, shouldn't we? <laughs> Margie Lockman. Professor of psychology at Brandeis University. Gave a tour of the office. The same halls that he would have walked down. That uh, once belonged to... When he was here. Abraham Maslow. Hi. Were you here when Abraham Maslow was here? I knew Abe Maslow quite Okay, well. so he knew Abe Maslow. <laughs> So there are a few people around. He Maslow worked here until a year before his death in 1970. I know that the desk was located here. But it was about 20 years before that. And he looked out this window. In the 1950s, and, uh, when his ideas really began to change the field of psychology. Before that, psychology focused on what's wrong with the person. Uh, they looked at people who were neurotic, people who had psychological disorders. Psychology was really the study of, of problems and mental illness. 
In other words, before Maslow, psychologists were more interested in why people were the way they were rather than how they could change, even improve. I don't think there's anything Pollyanna about saying, yes, improvement is possible. You have to work hard at it. Here's the way to do it. And so instead of looking at what was wrong with his patients, Maslow was really one of the first to think about what's right with the person. There is a possibility of improvement. Now, it, it has to be probabilistic. This audio of Maslow was recorded during a retreat in the mid-1960s where he lectured on self-improvement. Now, decades earlier, people looking for this kind of help might have been called patients who were sick. But to Maslow... They were called clients. There was much more of a face-to-face -face, uh, relationship between the therapist and the client that was a natural human relationship of trying to work together to understand problems or issues that might uh, occur. That was really revolutionary at the time, believe it or not. And Maslow didn't just come up with this idea that perfectly functioning people could nonetheless strive to be better. Persons can be improved. As you might remember from Psych 101, not guaranteed. he actually designed a framework to help understand how. There are some people who are more difficult than others. That framework well, is known as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's an idea that to this day shapes modern psychology. And on the show today, we'll explore Maslow's five human needs in order of importance, the things he said humans need to survive and then to thrive. And so this notion of a hierarchy, you start at the bottom and you build up. Like a pyramid. And at the base, the most fundamental human needs... The basic survival needs... Shelter, food, and, as we'll hear later, sleep. We have not taken sleep seriously since the 20th century. Second on the pyramid, security. Without security, you're not going to build a society. From there, Maslow believed you could move up to... Higher order, growth-oriented needs that other people really hadn't talked about before. Love and belonging. The reality for primates is you can't even survive without belonging to a group. Then comes esteem. To be in a healthy relationship, to like yourself, it just takes work. And finally, something Maslow called self-actualization. Really focusing on growth and finding meaning in life and purpose in life. The world is so full of things you can do <laughs> that you can try to do better. And if you can do that, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Maslow believed there was something fundamentally human about these needs and about our desire to be better and more fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, I think most of the work at the time had been <laughs> had actually been done with animals. Animal work had been done looking at things like hunger and thirst and these basic needs. And he tried to apply this to humans and found that that wasn't all there was. He, it wasn't just people were trying to survive. They were trying to do something beyond survival. And they had this basic, seemed like a basic motivation to improve and to reach their greatest potential. So what you heard was uh, just a brief explanation of each of the stages of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, and I think it's enough to give us a basic understanding of what Maslow was trying to communicate. In connection to uh, Lord of the Flies, and, and I think you know where I'm going to go with this, is ask yourself, where are the boys as a whole stuck for the majority of the novel? Did they ever fully conquer the first basic stage of water, food, and air? If so, are they well protected in stage two? Is their health ever an issue? And is there security from danger? Do they ever end up having proper shelter? Do any individuals manage to achieve stage three, four, or five? And if so, who are they? And in connection to ourselves, I think most of us are pretty lucky to be past stages one and two, hopefully, and are working on stage three, building connections and friendships. Or maybe even some of you are on stage uh, four, uh, where you're working on your self-esteem. Anyway, I hope this video helped. Remember to go back and, uh, and listen to portions um, over again, um, if need be.